Welcome to Vacuum Wars and to a competition video between arguably the two most advanced and feature-rich robot vacuums on the market, the Roborock S7 Max V and the Echovax Omni X1. They both have AI obstacle avoidance, auto-empty bins that both fill and clean the mopping pads, they both have top-of-the-line suction specs, and just about every app and navigation feature you could want in a modern robot vacuum. We put them both through extensive testing over the last several weeks, and in this video, we'll choose our favorite. So links in the description, and let's get started. First, I'll mention their vacuuming ability on hard floors and carpets. Here, they were both better than average, as you would expect for vacuums in this price range, but the X1 Omni did seem to consistently struggle a bit more with larger debris than the S7 Max V in the pickup torture tests. But again, both were very good, generally speaking. With the carpet deep clean test, where I and bed sand into medium pile carpet and weigh their bins before and after a five minute run, they were both well above average. But the Roborock S7 Max V was better. In fact, it was the highest score I've seen from a robot vacuum slash mop so far. With the power tests, the Omni was the winner. They both claim to have huge amounts of suction, almost double the amount of premium robot vacuums before this, and while I was able to confirm that extraordinary power with the X1 Omni, where it had the highest suction and almost the highest as airflow of any robot vacuum I've reviewed so far, the Roborock S7 Max V had relatively low numbers in our tests. This was most likely due to a failsafe on the S7 Max V that made it not like being tested in this way, and it's probably not a coincidence that the last time we had this trouble was with testing the older version of the S7. And because the Omni and the S7 Max V were nearly identical in the other power-related performance tests, like the crevice pickup test, where they both did significantly above average, I feel confident in saying that the Roborock probably does have the power that it advertises, but I was not able to confirm it. Navigation is really important with smart robot vacuums. Both of these use LiDAR to create maps and navigate in a systematic way. In the test, they both had near-perfect coverage at the studio and at my house. They both mapped my house really quickly and were really efficient. The Omni does seem to be a little bit quicker with navigation than the S7, but not by a huge amount. They also both had multi-floor mapping, which is the ability to save up to three maps in case you want to use them for multiple floors. They both were dead on accurate with their app-based mapping features like virtual barriers where you draw lines or boxes on the map in the app to keep the robot from going where you don't want it to go, a feature I find to be really useful. Speaking of the apps, both of these have pretty much everything you could want in terms of state-of-the-art app features, including very detailed scheduling options where you can set multiple parameters, not just for date and time, but power levels per room and mop settings. You can tell them to clean just one room or one area within a room. They both have video monitoring and remote control options with audio for pets. They have 3D maps, voice controls, though the Echovax voice assistant does not require a third party as it has one built in. With battery life, they both have the same size battery at 5200 milliamp hours, which I think is the largest battery possible with current regulations, though the Omni claims to have a much longer runtime than the S7 Max V on its low power mode. They both have very advanced obstacle avoidance sensors mounted in their front. These cameras and other sensors see obstacles that other robot vacuums miss, like cords, clothing, pet waste, and they avoid them most of the time. We recently did extensive testing on these AI systems and found that the Roborock S7 Max V outperformed the X1 Omni in every test except for the timed test, though it should be noted that these systems can get dramatically improved upon with every app update. In fact, a new update to the Omni just came out with even more cord avoidance. Moving on to the self-empty bins, this is one of my favorite new features that have come out in recent years. It started with bins that just emptied the contents of the dustbin, which was cool enough, but now these two also fill and clean the mop systems, which solves a ton of problems and really takes automation to the next level. The size is the first thing you'll notice. The Echovax bin is quite a bit taller and heavier than the Roborox, which could limit the places you would want to put this in your house. They both use similarly sized bags for dust collection, and as far as I can tell, they evacuate their dust bins equally well. They both have what seems to be really sturdy, clean, and dirty water tanks, which are equally easy 
easy to fill and empty. They clean the robot's mop pads in totally different ways, though. The Omni has no moving parts within the sink. It fills with water, and the two mop pads spin to clean themselves, where the Roborock has an internal brush system that moves back and forth to clean the pads. I tested how well they cleaned their pads in three different tests and was surprised at how well they both did, generally speaking. They really did seem to clean even stained pads completely in the first two tests. I did a final torture test, though, and in the end, I think the Omni was better at cleaning the pads than the Roborock, at least in extreme conditions. With the bin's automatic filling of the water tanks, there did seem to be a difference. With the S7 Max V, it filled its larger, removable water tank every time, but with the Omni, I was never really sure, since its water tank is internal, and as far as I can tell, there's no way to check to see if it's been filled. I mention this because the Omni Dock will run through its water cycle, whether the robot is properly docked or not. And in my first review of the Omni, I suspected it wasn't filling the tank properly. Add to this that the Omni has a much smaller water tank than the S7 Max V, and it's one area where the S7 Max V is definitely better. Last but not least is the mopping ability. Where the X1 Omni has two spinning brushes, the S7 Max V has a system which vibrates the mopping pad. One big difference is that the S7 Max V lifts up its mopping pad when it senses carpet, so if you have a mixture of carpet and hard floors in your house, it can clean the whole house in one run. Though it should be noted that Roborock states it's only good for low pile carpets at around four millimeters, whereas the Omni will not be able to vacuum carpets while it's on a mopping run, so you'll need to run it without the mopping pads attached on a different occasion to vacuum carpets as well. In terms of their actual mopping ability, we recently did a series of tests and found that the X1 Omni and S7 Max V actually tied with the most important mopping test, the dried on stain test. So I consider them fairly equally matched and much, much better than less expensive robot vacuum mop combos. One thing that came up in the review though is that it took the Roborock S7 Max V longer than most of the others to saturate its mopping pad with water, about five minutes. And until its mopping pad is saturated, it will not be nearly as good. So which of these do I think is best? I think the Roborock S7 Max V is a better system overall than the Echovax X1 Omni. It was a better vacuum on hard floors and carpet deep cleaning. It was better with obstacle avoidance. Its ability to mop hard floors and vacuum carpets in the same run is big for me. And in general, I felt that it was less temperamental than the Omni X1. They're both extremely good products, but that's my two cents. Links in the description, and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars before you leave. Thanks for watching.